This lecture is part of Berkeley Math 115, an introductory undergraduate course on number theory, and will be about Pythagorean triangles. So there's one obvious example of a Pythagorean triangle that everybody knows, which is you know, the famous equation 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared, where we have a triangle with sides 3, 4, and 5, and it has a right angle. So this is possibly the most famous non-trivial theorem in mathematics. Um, and um, what we want to do is to find other Pythagorean triangles, so that there are plenty of other examples like 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared and so on, and we, we want to sort of classify them all and understand what's going on. Um, so this is obviously a special case of the equation x squared plus y squared equals z squared, which we want to solve in integers. And the first thing we observe is we may as well take x, y, and z to be pairwise co-prime. Um, because um, if um, some number g divides x and g divides y, then g also divides z, and we can simply look at x over g squared plus y over g squared equals z over g squared as a, as a, as a, as a, as a smaller solution. And, and of course we take... Um, we probably want to take z to be non-zero too because solving x squared plus y squared equals zero is not actually a terribly interesting problem. Um, so um, this is actually a special case of something called a ternary quadratic form. Um, so ternary means um, that it has three variables, so we're really looking at the ternary quadratic form x squared plus y squared minus c squared, and we're looking at representations of zero by this form. And as you can imagine, um, there's an entire theory of ternary quadratic forms asking what numbers they represent and so on, which is like the theory of binary quadratic forms, only it's quite a bit more complicated. So what we're looking at is, is which is more or less the simplest possible case that isn't completely trivial. We're just looking at representations of zero by this very easy ternary form. And um, we're going to use the ideas we've covered in previous lectures in order to study this, for, um, the, the, this equation. And we'll actually have four different methods of um, looking at the solutions. Um, first of all, um, we're going to use the theory we had for binary quadratic form x squared plus y squared equals n. And now we recall that n has a primitive representation um, if and only if um, n has no factors, no, no, no prime factors p of the form p congruent to 3 mod 4. And we also want um, um, 4 um, does not divide n. Um, now let's apply this to x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Well, we, we notice that if z is divisible by 2, then in fact z squared is divisible by 4. And if x squared plus y squared is divisible by 4, it's easy to check that both x and y must be even, so this would not be primitive. So if we have a solution of this which is primitive, um, then the only prime factors of z are um, 1 mod 4. And conversely, if all its prime factors are 1 mod 4, then there is a primitive solution. And if we look at the first few solutions of Pythagoras' theorem, so um, 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared, 5 squared plus 12 squared equals 13 squared, there's another one which is 8 squared plus 15 squared equals 17 squared, or um, um, <coughs> um, um, 7 squared plus 24 squared equals 25 squared and so on. Um, let's look at these numbers on the right. Um, you will see that um, these are all products of primes that are the form 1 modulo 4. Um, so so our, our theory of the 
binary quadratic form x squared plus y squared shows that this is exactly the condition for z to appear as a solution of the equation, that, that, that z must have all prime factors of the form 1 mod 4. And conversely, we've seen that if all prime factors of 0 are the form 1 mod 4, then there is in fact a, a solution of this. So um, that's, the, that's the first approach to um, the, 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 the Pythagorean equation. It tells you exactly which possible z can appear on the on the right uh, uh, as the hypotenuse of a triangle assuming it's it's a primitive triangle of course um, so um, now let's have method two which is going to be a geometric method so the first method used number theory now we're going to use geometry <clears throat> and if we notice if we've got x squared plus y squared equals z squared um, we may as well divide by z and we get x squared plus y squared equals 1 with x and y now rational numbers. And, you know, this is just the equation of a circle. Let's see if everybody knows. So what we're doing is trying to find points on the circle with rational coordinates. And there are some obvious points, um, 1, 0, for example, and that just corresponds to y equals 0, and we have x squared equals z squared, which is a rather uninteresting solution. Um, so we want to find other points on the circle apart from the four obvious points. And there's a, there's a very neat geometric way of doing this. What we do is we, we, we just draw... Um, um, we, we, we just draw a line through this point here, and um, our rational point on the circle. And we, we look at its intersection. Um, and and we, we, sorry, we don't look at, we look at its intersection with the um, y-axis. So this is going to have a, a point t here. And now we notice that if this point um, um, x, y has rational coordinates, then t will also be rational. And conversely, if t is rational, then its intersection with the circle will have rational coordinates. So, so, so let's just see why. Um, so the slope t of this line is going to be, well, you, you know how to work out the slope. It's, it's, it's just what? It's just this distance here divided by this distance here. So we get t equals y over x plus 1. Um, and um, so we, we know x squared plus y squared equals 1. So if we substitute y equals t x plus 1 in here, we get x squared plus um, t squared um, times x plus 1 squared equals 1. So, um, so um, we can um, find that x equals 1 minus t squared over 1 plus t squared. And we can also solve for y. We get y is equal to t times this. So y is equal to 2t over 1 plus t squared. Um, so, if, um, the, the, so, so the solutions of Pythagoras' um, um, equation correspond exactly to points t on the y-axis together with this one extra point here. Because if, 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 if we try and... Um, draw the line through this point and this point it becomes somewhat ambiguous and um, for instance we can see some examples of this suppose we take t equals a half where we get x is um, three quarters over five four which is three fifths and y um, is equal to um, 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 two t over one plus t squared which is four fifths so we get the solution um, um, 3 fifths squared plus 4 fifths squared equals 1, which, of course, just gives us 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. And similarly, by taking other rational values of t, you can find other solutions to Pythagoras' try. For instance, if you want to experiment, you can try t equals a third or t equals a quarter. And you see it's very easy to produce solutions of Pythagoras' equation just by picking your favourite rational number and substituting it into um, substituting it into this. Um, so, so method two um, shows us that the solutions 
more or less have the structure of a straight line because we can convert the points on a circle to the points on the y-axis. More precisely, it's a straight line plus a point, or I think if you were doing projective geometry, you would say it was a projective line. Um, so now let's look at method three, which is actually a bit similar to method two. Here we're going to use the Gaussian integers or rather we're going to use the Gaussian rational numbers. And um, here, suppose we've got a solution to x squared plus y squared equals z squared. Well, as before, we can convert it to a solution of x squared plus y squared equals 1 with x and y rational. Um, but now we're going to take um, x plus i y to be a complex number. So um, again, um, we can think of the solutions as lying on a circle, but now instead of thinking the circle as being points in the plane, we want to think of these points as being complex numbers. So here's the point one and here's the point i, it's point minus one and minus i and so on. And then we've got these, these other points like um, um, three fifths plus four fifths i and so on. So what we want to do is to find complex numbers um, of absolute value one um, with real part and imaginary part both rational. And now we can get some extra structure because if A and B are complex numbers of absolute value 1, so A equals B equals 1, so you remember the absolute value is just the distance from the origin, then um, A times B is also equal to 1. So if we've got two um solutions of Pythagoras's equation, we can get a third one just by multiplying them together. So for instance, if we take um, 3 fifths plus 4 fifths i um, as one solution, we could just multiply it by, say, itself. Why not? 3 fifths plus 4 fifths i. And we get a new solution, which is going to be minus 7 over 25 i um, plus um, 24 over 25 i. And this corresponds to the new solution minus 7 squared plus 24 squared equals 25 squared. So whenever we've got two solutions of Pythagorean triangle, we can just convert them into complex numbers, multiply them together, and get another solution. Um, so in, in fact, um, since um, multiplication of complex numbers is associative and has inverses, we see the solutions um, of this actually form a group. So, um, it, so that in, in other words, the, the co-prime solutions of Pythagoras's equation more or less form a group, at, at least if you sort of insist that z is positive, because if you let z be zero, this doesn't work out. Um, so, um, so that's the third method. Method four is is a sort of algebraic method. Um, so we so, so we're trying to solve x squared plus y squared equals z squared, and um, we're going to take um, x, y, and z to be co-prime in pairs. And um, we're we're going to do this algebraically. Notice first of all we can assume that z is odd. Because if z was even, this would imply x and y would both have to be even, and then we could divide everything by 2. Um, and if z is odd, um, x and y can't both be odd, because then this would be even. And they can't both be even, because um, then again the sum would be even. So we may as well assume that um, x is even and y is odd. Um, and now we're going to... Now, now, now we're going to factor it. You notice this says that x squared equals z squared minus y squared. We can factor that as z minus y times z plus y. And now because z is even and y and z are odd, we can take out a factor of um, 4 from everything. We get x over 2 squared is equal to z minus y over 2 times z plus y over 2. And now we notice that these two things here are actually co-prime. Because the only z and y are co-prime, so the only factor that z minus y and z plus y can have in common is two. But we've we've taken out this factor of two, and we also notice that the product is a square.
Well, if we've got two co-prime numbers whose product is a square, this means they must both be they must both be prime. So we get z plus y over two is equal to r squared, and z minus y over two is equal to s squared. And um, we can take r and s co-prime. Um, so this gives us a, a, a solution um, of Pythagoras' triangle. We take x equals 2rs and y equals r squared minus s squared. And then z, you can easily check, is equal to r squared plus s squared. So any, any solution with x, y, z co-prime satisfying these conditions about oddness and evenness can be written like this for integers r and s. And you can see this is actually a special this comes from the identity r squared plus s squared is equal to r squared minus s squared plus 2rs all squared, a simple algebraic identity. So this gives some solutions of Pythagoras' triangle. And what we've shown is that, in fact, it gives all of them, provided we've got these oddness conditions. Um, so again, we can take small values of r and s. For instance, if we take r equals 1, s equals 2, 2, we find that 5 squared, so I should have put squares in there, is, is equal to um, minus 3 squared plus 4 squared, which is uh, the, the, the basic solution all over again. And of course, you can take your favourite random integers r and s and generate lots of other solutions. Um, now I'm going to give an application of um, the fourth method, to Fermat's last theorem. So Fermat's last theorem says that x to the n plus y to the n equals z to the n has no non-trivial solutions provided n is greater than or equal to 3. So we've been doing the case n equals 2 and it's got gazillions of solutions. Um, if n is greater than or equal to 3 it's got no solutions um, provided um, x, y and z are non-zero because it's got some Obviously, we can just put x equals 0 and then y equals z and so on. So you need to exclude these trivial cases. Um, this was finally proved by Wiles um, 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 about 20 or 30 years ago. Um, but meanwhile, um, before Wiles, um, Fermat had already proved this for n equals 4. Um, I think he also did the case n equals 3. Um, so, so Fermat's proof for n equals 4 is the simplest example of a, of a technique known as Fermat's method of descent. And the idea is you show that if you can find a solution of the equation, then you can find a smaller solution. And as you can't keep on finding smaller and smaller solutions indefinitely, this shows that there are no solutions. And when I say a solution, I mean a, a non-trivial solution. Um, so... Um, so what we want to do is to show there are no solutions of x to the 4 plus y to the 4 equals z to the 4, except for the trivial solutions. Um, in fact, Fermat's method doesn't need a 4 up here. Um, it will also work for x to the 4 plus y to the 4 equals z squared. So I imagine what Fermat did is he first applied his method to x to the 4 plus y to the 4 equals z to the 4, and then noticed his method didn't actually use the fact that the exponent here was 4 and, and worked just as well for z squared. Um, z squared is, of course, z squared. z to the 4 is z squared squared. So if you can solve this equation, you can solve. So if you can solve this equation, you can solve that one. Anyway, what you do is, is you notice that this can be written as x squared squared plus y squared squared equals z squared. So it's a special case of Pythagoras' theorem, except that two of the arguments are squares. So um, again, mumbling something about z and y being even or odd, we can assume, we can insert the solution of Pythagoras' theorem in before. We can assume x squared is r squared minus s squared, and y squared is equal to 2rs. Um, so that should be a capital Y and a capital X. Um, and um, now we notice that... Um, y squared is 2rs, and r and s are co-prime. So um, 2rs is a square, 
Um, we notice that r is odd because um, x squared plus s squared equals r squared. Um, and if we've got 2 times 2 co-prime numbers being a square, then um, 2 times one of these numbers must be a square and the other number must be a square. Well, if, if, if r is odd, we must have r is a square and 2s is a square. Um, um, so, so, so suppose we have r equals a squared and suppose we um, have um, s is equal to 2b squared. Well, um, now we can substitute this into to, to this equation here, and we find we get x squared is equal to a squared minus 4, sorry, is, is equal to a to the 4 minus 4b to the 4. Well, um, this doesn't seem to have worked. We seem to have gone from one equation. So if you've got a solution to this equation, we can get a solution to an apparently totally different equation. Well, it's not all that different. It's again saying x, to the x squared is equal to something to the power of 4, except now we've got minus 4 something to the 4. Well, now what we can do is we can just repeat everything with this equation because this again looks like Pythagoras. So we get x squared equals a squared squared, um, except we have to put a... 2b squared squared on this um, and now we can just repeat and I'll leave this as an exercise and what we find is that from any solution of this um, we get a smaller solution of a squared equals e to the 4 plus f to the 4. And now we're back to our original equation. So what we've shown is that a solution of um, x to the 4 plus y to the 4 equals z squared leads to um, a solution of um, um, uh, uh, the different equation x to the 4 minus 4y to the 4 equals z squared and this leads to an even smaller solution of x to the 4 plus y to the 4 equals z squared. So if you've got one non-trivial solution we can keep getting smaller and smaller non-trivial solutions and of course you can't keep on getting smaller and smaller integers so there are no non-trivial solutions. Um, the reason why Fermat's method works turns out to be that this is something called an elliptic curve and um, you can um, um, apply similar methods whenever you've got a, um, a, a, an elliptic curve. And this is one of the reasons why elliptic curves are so much easier to deal with than other sorts of curves. Okay, next lecture we'll be moving on to a completely different topic of Dirichlet series.